Welcome to this demo of Sweet CRM. Today, I'm going to walk you through the Sweet CRM dashboards, how to configure them, add brand new dashboards. We're going to go ahead and start by logging into the system. This will take us to our default Sweet CRM dashboard, the one that you receive when creating a new user in the system. I can go ahead and delete any non relevant dashlets here by using the X icon. For example, I can remove my activity stream. We'll keep my calls and meetings. We can remove opportunities, accounts, and leads. We can add in brand new dashlets using the action add dashlets menu. And by selecting a relevant dashlet to us like my calendar. To move dashlets around on the page, we can click on the header and drag until we see the background move as well. For example, if we click on my calls, you see the background there with the dotted line. We move across to the right hand side. We'll see the dotted lines came across now as well, and we can then drop it into place. Same goes for our second dashlet here, my meetings. Now we've set up our Sweet Serum dashboard to give us an overview of our day or potentially our week, the looks of it. You can see here on the left hand side, my calendar is showing us all of the meetings, calls, events and tasks booked in for this week. And I can click on any of these to give you more details, um, invite people, send away invitations or update the record. On the right hand side, I've got a better breakdown of my calls and my meetings. These won't show just this week's. These will go as far as your filter has allowed. Now talking of filter, that's something we can configure using the cog icon. Inside of the cog icon, we get options like rename the title of the dashlet, which columns are displayed, how many rows we show, whether we want this to refresh automatically, so we can leave this open as a static dashboard, and then our filters. Right now it's filtered to only my items with the status of plan, but we can change this around as much as we like. For example, I could go ahead and remove only my items and select the last seven days. And now we'll get all of our calls that have been created within the last seven days. You can see there's 51. I'll pop this back so it's just our own and hit save. Each column can be sorted as well. By clicking on the header, you'll see it's now sorted to show the closest meeting first, all the way through to 2025 here showing the furthest away meetings. We'll next configure a sales pipeline. We can do so by adding a brand new dashboard page. We'll go to actions, add tab, by typing in the name of our dashboard, and by choosing how many columns. One is good for large charts, three is good for lots of small sets of data, and two is a kind of generalist. I prefer two. Once setting the add, we'll see sales pipeline appears in the top left corner. If you can click on this, it will take us back to a blank page. From here, we can add in brand new dashlets using the action menu. Add dashlets, and then selecting a module or some charts. We'll add in a module first. We're looking for opportunities. We'll then head across the charts and we'll add in the pipeline by sales stage and the all opportunities by lead source by outcome. We'll close this and we'll configure the layout by dragging and dropping. We can now see we've got our pipeline our opportunities by lead source and then their outcome as well, basically how much value is tied up in each stage. And at the bottom we have our top opportunities. Right now this is set to only show my opportunities, but using the cog icon we can configure this to show anyone in the companies or by selecting with assign to a number of members from my team. we can see there's 23 records. If we wanted to show more on a single page, we can do so by modifying displayed rows. And if we want to update the header to be more relevant, we can change it under title. One more thing to mention about out of the box charts is we can click into certain areas to drill down on that data. For example, on pipeline by sales stage, I can go to qualification 
and click on qualification. This will take me to the opportunities module and pre-filter it for the qualification sales stage. For our last example, we're going to add a brand new page, this time for our case and support team. We'll use the actions menu, add tab, we'll type in support, and again, we'll choose two columns. Moving to the support tab, to populate the support screen, again, we'll go to add dashlet, we'll choose my open cases, and then instead of using a out the box chart, we'll use a report to place a custom chart. Going to the cog icon for report, we can select the report we'd like to display. In this case, open cases by type. Choose only show chart and select the chart we'd like to show. As we can see, our chart now loads in and we have a breakdown of our open cases by type. Showing the quantity there as well in the tooltip. If you'd like to add a more relevant title, we can do so by grabbing the report name or by typing in a custom title and saving. Next, we'll turn our focus to the My Open Cases. I'll drag this over to the right hand side, press the cog icon. I'll set it up to display more records in one go. We'll remove My Open Cases and just rename it to Open Cases. We'll remove only my items and we'll apply a date created filter for the last seven days. We can apply any other filters here like priority or type if as required. Each of these filters as well is configurable by the admin of the system. So if there's additional fields you'd like to display here in the dashlet, it can be done with a few simple changes via Studio. And that says we've configured our dashboards. The last thing to show you is how to remove a dashboard. We do this via the actions menu and edit tabs. You can then press the minus icon to remove a dashboard. And as you can see, it's now gone.